Welcome to the With Winning in Mind podcast. I'm Heather Sumlin with my brother Troy Basham, and we have decided that it is time to talk about goals again. We talked about goals in January. We did a discussion on goals and setting goals, but we really didn't get in the nitty gritty of how to do it. And so we're going to give you some tips on how you start, and I'm going to let you do it. Yeah, I think there's there's a critical thing with, with anytime you're goal setting or trying to get a goal, mm -hmm. you have to plan. Yeah. But I want to talk about the four things you have to do before you start planning. Oh, I like this. Because so let's I need dive to set into goals. that. I need to set goals. We're getting close to the end of the year. And then, so, you know, I think you should set goals all year, not just at the beginning of the year, but, you know, thinking about the beginning of the year coming. I was going to say, so let, let's do it then. Huh? So, okay, before oh, we yeah. begin, then, do you have a goal now that is different from the beginning of the year now that you're approaching the fall? We're officially past summer. It's like, maybe I want to do something different. I think so. I think things change. Okay, so at the beginning of the year, if you recall correctly, I wanted to be active. That I was mean, your word. That was my was word it? of the year. And I think somewhere along the line, I forgot my word of the year. So I think I want to be more intentional. And so I need to set some concrete goals to, to make that happen. So now the word is discipline, ladies and gentlemen. She wants to be disciplined. But I'm yes. talking about the bigger goal. I'm talking about a yeah. goal that's result-oriented, something I want to accomplish, something I can yeah. define that's with maybe within the year or maybe even beyond a year. It could be even further down the line. Like there are many people that have goals that are, you know, four, five, six years out. Mm -hmm. You know, you, Absolutely. you have a daughter that's a senior in high school. She might have a goal of, I want to go to college and graduate with a X degree. So that's mm -hmm. obviously going to take more than four years. One, I got to finish high school. Mm -hmm. Then I got to go to college. And the average person takes five and a half years to finish their degree. Right now, that's a big part of what, of the goal setting process in our house. Okay, so let, let's do yes. that. Let's talk about goal setting as far as I want to accomplish something that's further out. Mm -hmm. Could be within a year, but, you know, like if you start in January, by summer I want to have this happen, or by the end of the year I want it to have happen, and then beyond that. Okay. Okay, so there's four things that you have to do before you can even start planning to do this. So let's, let's cover those. And I want you to tackle the first one because we were talking before – and you're breaking some down that our dad used to say mm -hmm. there's there's differences. I'll, I'll let you go in there. But the first way that we determine a goal is we look at it as determine a dream worth trading your life for. So don't look at it as a goal that you want to just have. Look at it as a, being a dream that's worth trading my life for. Now, quickly, what do I mean by that? Mm -hmm. What I mean is your life – as I understand it, is the time you have on, the on Earth yes. as we're living right now, okay? Until Elon Musk gets us to, to Mars, we're <laughs> going to stick with Earth. So the how I spend my time is technically my life. Mm -hmm. So like today, I'm willing to trade my life to hang out with my sister and do this podcast, which is I make awesome. his life. Yeah, I make it so much happier. And then, every, then I will choose. I'll choose to trade my life to go hang out with the Crown Golf Academy athletes mm -hmm. this afternoon, which is awesome because I get to see high school golfers transform throughout the year. It's amazing how they they get better. So to me, that's that's a value. I get some out of it. They get something out of it. And then tonight, I'll I'll trade my time to hang out with Lucas. Oh, that's right. That's right. So I think one thing that might be interesting to say here is if you haven't read With Winning in Mind in the goal setting system section of With Winning in Mind, Lanny talks about where this came from, this determined a dream worth trading your life for. And it was his grandfather was a mail carrier and never done anything super exciting, never been out of the like, city limits, I think, like had never really gone, traveled, done anything. And so at the end of his days, he told our dad, he says, I've never done anything a typical man couldn't do. And I regret that. And you're going to do amazing things because you're going to go and be an Olympic champion and you're going to make our family proud. And he's like, determine a dream worth trading your life for because you are. Every day you're trading your life for something, whatever is 
in your head in that moment, that's what you're spending your life doing, thinking about, dwelling on, whatever. And so I thought that was pretty, pretty cool. That's what makes me want to be active. This idea that I want to, I want to do more than maybe others have done. Well, you have to be active to accomplish this goal that's bigger than what you would say is a wish. So go into detail about the differences between a a goal, a wish, and a dream. So I remember dad saying, and I, and I, I may misquote it, but, but this is the gist of it. Okay. Is a wish has no change in behavior. Um, it's just something you want, but you're not going to do anything in order to make it happen. You're just going to talk about it. I could buy a lottery ticket and I'm just wishing I get the winning numbers. Right. That's, that's a wish change with anything. no change in behavior, no action plan, no steps. You just wish. Right? I wish I'm going to get, I wish I get a better, I wish I get a raise, but I don't do anything to get the raise. Exactly. I just have it in the back of my exactly. mind. I wish I get my dream job, but yet I'm not going to do any, I'm not even going to apply for it, nor see if I have the qualifications it takes to get it. That's, that's a wish. So the good thing about it is I'm thinking about it. Mm-hmm. The bad thing is I don't do anything. Exactly. A goal is a wish with a change in behavior. So you have to change behavior. See, if you didn't change behavior, you can't accomplish the goal because if the behavior was already there, the habits and attitudes necessary to make it happen were already there, you'd already have the goal. So a goal is setting things in motion. Yes, so and it has a deadline. So right? it's not just a thought. No, it's moving for- forward. But then a dream is a goal that haunts you. In, in a good way? In a good way. It, it's, it's something you can't help but think about it. You go to sleep at night thinking about it. You wake up thinking about it. It's just haunting you until it happens. And so when we're thinking about a dream, it's not just a typical goal. I mean, we're going to set goals along the way that aren't going to be super exciting, but they're, the dreams are exciting. So a goal is something I would like to really accomplish. Mm-hmm. A dream is something I'm so passionate about, I cannot get it out of my head. I think the Olympic gold medal for our father was a dream. I I think you're right about that. To me, it was more of a goal for me personally. I think it was a dream. I have to think about that way. You know, I was was passionate about winning. I Mm -hmm. wanted to win. But I got to a point to where because everyone would say, oh, well, your dad won that event. You would go to a competition. Well, he won that event. Mm -hmm. And then finally you get to the point to where it doesn't matter what I win. They're always going to tie me to him. And there's only one event Although it's argumentative, there's a group of people that think this is the, the best thing. You know, it's the best event, the biggest event. And you there's want nothing it? greater. You want and it, then, then it was nothing. the best event, the biggest event? Yeah. Well, there's other people that say, yeah, but it didn't really matter. It's not like the World Championships, the Olympics, or that kind of stuff. And mm-hmm. I see in Ryan Nationals, his dad never won it. Yeah. He won it. He won the junior division years earlier in his career in service rifle. And. Okay. So that for, was an accomplishment. For those like me that don't know that, what what's the difference between service rifle and. Other right, like Surf- a service rifle is a competitive shooting event using what a lot of people don't like, which they refer to as an assault rifle, which is like an M16, M14 military combat rifle that you're using. That's service that you're going to use in service. Oh, okay, it's okay. a term service, so a service rifle. Service rifle is a military style Correct. rifle, and but there's competitions that juniors can do with that. Oh, yeah. And so oh, people yeah. are using these types of... And you're shooting at long distances. You're you're not just shooting at 50 meters like we do an international rifle. You're shooting, you know, up to 100 to 300 yards. So the events. first um That was his first national championship was with a service rifle. Okay, that's really cool. That's, yeah. that's a very interesting tidbit trivia for you there. Yeah. Okay. Nice. Which I never shot. I never got into a service rifle. Mm-hmm. So I went the Olympic route. Well... The NRA has national championships. They have service rifle, and then they have international. Mm-hmm. And the international, obviously, they're, they're different weeks. But okay. you're using the same range. You're shooting up at Camp Perry, Ohio, which is basically right on the right there. You're, you're staring at it like you're eerie from the range, which is kind of cool. And is it cool or is it eerie? I'm it's kind of both. But anyway, that you're, was punny. you're competing in. The same type of event that you would be in the Olympics, okay. but it's a little different. In the Olympics, you're you're in a building, concrete slab, and you're shooting outdoors, so you're, so you're protected, protected. Okay, that makes but sense. But when you shoot, if there's wind, the the wind can move the bullet. Where at a camp in Ohio, you're in the open, 
So you're standing on grass and you're having to, to shoot. It's a six bull paper target, which now everything's electronic now. It's a different type of event. So some people, the purist will say, that's the way it should be. Mm-hmm. This separates the men from the boys, where your true Olympic shooters would say that's ridiculous. But our dad hated it and didn't like it and never won it. And so I set a goal. I guess you could say it, was, it turned into more of a, of a dream of not only winning it, but I, I didn't want to just win it. I wanted to set a national record to illustrate that, okay, I can accomplish something in this sport that my father never did. Mm-hmm. Even though it might be trivial, and I was able to do that, I won that match uh, three years in a four-year period. I won it three times in a four-year period. Nice. And, there's only and one you re- set a record. Set three national records. Yeah. Go. So that was that was really cool. But that was the difference between like a wish and a goal. Before I just kinda like yeah, it'd be cool to win. But then it but then didn't it matter t- as much. Well, when I when I started winning bigger what I thought bigger competitions were mm-hmm. and I started kind of reaching the you know, closer and closer to seeing, okay, I could accomplish this. That's when I started noticing comments that were being made and that mm-hmm. kind of stuff. And I'm like, okay, maybe I need to segue into something different. And that's when it became, no, I'm going to do this. I mean, I totally changed the way I trained, totally changed the way I looked at the event. And then the following year, it wasn't good. I had to repeat. It was like, there's no question. There's only one person in the history of that championship. And this is the oldest rifle national championships we have in this country. Only one person had ever won back-to-back up until that time. So I'm like, okay, I got to be the second one. And then I didn't compete the third uh, the, I didn't have a chance to three peep because the world championships were the same week oh, as that one. That makes it hard. Yeah, it makes it hard. So then the following year, I wasn't planning on going. I just went on a whim because Dad was launching a new product and he was going to launch it there at that event. I'm like, well, if I'm going to go with you at the event, I'm going to compete and I want to win in that again. So that was kind of cool. So you won three times in a row for you because you weren't there. Yes, I, I went. You weren't there on your third. Yeah, there was a gap year, yeah. But what I'm saying is, is that up until that time, I think it was a wish from '94 to up to '98. It was just mm-hmm. a wish. Oh, I'd like to win the match. That'd like, be kind that of cool. Be cool. Dad yeah. never did it, mm-hmm. but it wasn't until you know when I went to these other countries and people tell me all this stuff that Dad did. And when you won, say, oh yeah, I remember your dad won this match years ago. And you're like, oh my gosh, I can't get out of his shadow. Then in '98. When I didn't make the the world championship team, I got really upset, and my wife at that time just basically re guided me mm-hmm. and say, "Well, you're the one that says you know everything happens for a reason. Maybe there's a reason why you're not going to the world championships." And so it forced me to rethink this championship, and so then it put me on a on a new goal mm-hmm. that became more kind of like a dream you were talking about. But within that, not only do you have to determine this. Mm-hmm. dream or in our case the main goal that you want to accomplish you have to then ask yourself when do you want it like i need a timeline if I, you don't give a timeline then there's no sense of urgency to accomplish it. and i think that's why i had opportunity to win this particular match a couple times before mm-hmm. 98 but it didn't come to fruition i think it's because i never set an actual date of when do you want to accomplish this so you didn't give yourself an end point didn't give myself an endpoint. So I was like, ah, you need to do that. You have to set a date. Now, it doesn't have to be the day, mm-hmm. like the exact date. Some people say, okay, you need this date, this time. Right. I think a month, year, or maybe a season in the mm-hmm. year. You know, like a lot of, you know, athletes, like high school athletes, they're going to sign, you know, have their oh. official signing for the college that they choose, and they make a big deal about it, and they should. It's a huge accomplishment for these, you know, high school athletes to mm-hmm. sign. Well, you kind of have an idea: is it in the fall or the spring? Right. Depending on your sport, might be one or the other, and so they'll have this idea that okay, you know, by my junior year at this time, like fall of my junior year, I want to sign, or senior of my fall semester I want to sign for a team so something like that that's when you need you need to have a date that's at least that specific Mm -hmm. for that so you have to have determine your goal or your dream set a timeline like a a deadline I guess you could say 
of when you want to accomplish it and what's next. You said we're going to cover four. Yeah, the third, the third one, I think, of the four, mm-hmm. it's probably the hardest one. Well, it's probably the one that people skip. Yeah, but it's important because this is going to answer a key question you're going to ask after you're done doing this. And when you're done coming up with the goal, when you're done figuring what you're going to do and how you're going to do and all that kind of stuff, you, you're basically saying what and how, you know, and you're working your way towards it. You're going to ask yourself at the end, is the prize worth the price? Okay, so ask yourself, what is the prize? Most people will say, well, that, that's number one. That's the goal. That's the dream. No. no. The prize is actually the third one, and that's the pay value. Yeah. What's the payoff, as you would say? Why are you doing it? So that's one of the reasons why when I first start working, especially with a pageant competitor, and we sit down, one of the first things I want to know is why do you want this? Because it's a lot of work. It's a lot of extra time, energy, effort, time away from your friends, away from the things that you love to do. Why does it matter to you? How would it change your life? And this is why wishes don't work. Because a wish, what's the pay value of the wish? It is that. It's wishful thinking. Yeah. It doesn't change anything. But it, once you get into a goal mindset of accomplishing something or I want to fulfill this dream I've had since I was young, right? Mm-hmm. So now you ask yourself, okay, why do I want this? What is the pay value? And it could be a number of things. But if it's not personal to you, so it has to be personal to you. And I don't care how corny it is. I don't care how, right. how simple it is or – extravagant it might be it has to be personal to you so some people will have a a goal in mind and the reason why they want it is because money mm. i it's going to provide me more money okay great but, but that's the, one thing but what does that money actually give you well i'm i'm going to go with the step of that's one what's the second thing if you can't give me three good reasons why i want three pay values of why i want this mm-hmm then the chances that you're going to achieve this to me go down. And how will your life, how will your life be enhanced if you had it? How would your life change? What's, what's going to happen for you if you get it? Well, in some cases it has nothing to do with money. It has to do with feelings, Mm -hmm. you know, a feeling of accomplishment. You just wanted to tell everybody you won something bad didn't win. What's personal, that was one of your pay me. values, right? Like that yeah, pay value is, A, it's an opportunity to finally step out of a shadow mm-hmm. that I couldn't get out of. So that was really, really important. Mm-hmm. Second was the challenge because I didn't care for the way it was – the way that competition was shot, I didn't mm-hmm. care for. It's an all-day event. Well, and it's outside, you said, and all the weather and all oh, the you, elements you shoot, and everything. You got three positions. You finish your one position, and you got to wait for the next relay to do it. And then you go into the next one. So it's an all-day event. There's – Tons of reasons why I didn't so like tiring. doing it. So to me, it was an opportunity to, okay, not only get out of the shadow, but the other thing is I had to create a mindset that was different of having an attitude of, I want to go there. I want to compete there. I want to experience it instead of the, oh, oh, I can't believe we have to go there. It's hot. It's windy. There's always a storm. It's always bad. The scores are low. I had had to change my whole attitude to me that became a pay value because look if i can change my attitude about this Mm -hmm. imagine what that's going to do for all the future things i'm going to not want to do in life so it it prepared me for the for the future and so that was that was a a big one for me and i think the the third pay value was it gave me the the opportunity to stand out within the within the team because everyone on the team you kind of had people pegged okay this guy's good at this this guy's good at this this guy's good at this and it kind of gave me that one little okay well at least i did this and i can say that okay well this person this person this person has yet to do it mm-hmm. and i compete with them every day and to me that was a little bit of side gratification <laughs> once i got home you know yeah. throughout the year that was kind of my motivation for it so I think, you know, listing pay value being personal to you. I will say this, though. I think money is probably the most common one when I'm working with people trying to reach goals, which you would think is surprising because we both mm-hmm. work with a lot of young athletes who are in high school. And you're like, well, then how are they getting paid? It's called scholarships. Yeah, for sure. And many of them, I, I want to achieve a scholarship, even though 
I have many people that mom and dad have already paid for it. They're like, hey, put money back in a college fund. You don't need this scholarship for them. It's personal gratification. I think also recognition. I think a lot of people want the recognition. Maybe kind of like when, when dad was younger and hadn't been good at a lot of the things that he tried. So I'm, I'm looking at dog sports and things like that. There's no money in that, really. And so it's not about that as much as it's about I want the recognition. I want to see can we accomplish XYZ title or XYZ goal as a team. And there's that qualification that, yes, I am a good handler. I have done this well. That's important to some people too. Yeah, so think about do you have three good reasons why – and you can have four. Well, you can have a lot. You know, you can have as many as you want. But it needs to be personal to you. It's got to be something that's going to motivate you because you're not going to do number five if you don't have a list that are really good in this pay value. Okay, then we get to the fourth one. And the fourth one is the one that kind of challenges you to get to reality. And that is you have to honestly, honestly evaluate the obstacles Oh, I think a lot of people don't do this. And there's some obstacles you don't see initially, I would imagine. But there are obstacles you're going to know are in your way. Well, here's what our father used to say growing up. Well, you, you weren't in the range a lot, sweet, but he used to do no. this. He used to ask people, they go, what well, I really want to do this. He goes, I really want to do this. I really want to do this. He goes, well, then why haven't you done it already? Mm-hmm. Like, why don't you have it now? Which is interesting. So when you're working with an individual and they go, well, I want to do this. I'm like, okay, what's the obstacles in your way? Why don't you have it now? Why haven't you achieved it already? And you know the common answer I get? Right. Well, uh, because I'm only such and such years of age. Like, well, I'm only 18. I'm only 20. I'm not out of college yet. Oh, so you. But in every case, I can find somebody younger than them that's already achieved it. So I'm like, if they could do it, why can't you? So let's get reality. Or let's get real here, I should say. You're not there and you haven't been there because something is standing in your way. That's called an obstacle. What if we list that, but then we turn that around and say, okay, this is not standing in my way. This is an opportunity that mm-hmm. if I can overcome it, I get closer to achieving that dream or that goal that I want. Obstacles or opportunities in disguise. Yes. And so... And there are many obstacles. Well, and I think it's all in how you're looking at it, like you said. If you're looking at it as an obstacle and that it's standing in your way and it's going to get in your way, then it will. But if you're looking at how can I... What do I need to learn about myself? What do I need to do in order to get around this what appears to be an obstacle? Yeah, the other thing is is by listing the obstacles and asking why don't I have it now, it's going to put you in a position to where you're going to see, is that is that timeline really legit? Mm-hmm. Like, I want, to, I want to accomplish this a year from now. Okay, well, once you list your obstacles, right? And let's say, well, technically I'm not proficient enough to do what I want to do. Okay, how long is it going to take you to be technically proficient enough? Mm-hmm. Well, depending on what you do, that might be, that might not be something you can do in a year. It might take you two, three years to get there. Sometimes the obstacles force you to adjust the whole outline. I had I had a sporting clay shooter that wanted to accomplish something within a year. It was like a 10-month goal. I said, okay, let's look at the obstacles. We got to that. And one of the things he said, he goes, well, what I want to accomplish – most people who have accomplished are master class shooters, and he wasn't even close to being a master class shooter. I said, so what's the timeline with the amount of time you're giving it, the training you're doing, that you could realistically have the skill set mm. to do that? Totally changed everything. Because now he went back and he's like, yeah, I'm probably not going to do that in, in a year. I said, when do you think you're going to do it? He goes, well, if I did, and here's what he, he says, if I changed the coach, and sought out a, a better coach, if I'm willing to increase my amount of training in a week and I'm willing to go to these type of matches, realistically-ish thinking it's maybe three years from now, I'm like, ah. So well, what if we put that in motion? What do, we, what do we think? Maybe two, probably by three. He goes, yeah. 
I was like, okay, so guess what we had to do? We had to go back Adjust and the review deadline. it. deadline, yeah. So if you're not honestly looking at your obstacles, then you can't verify if the first second makes sense. So it, it makes sense. So figure out a dream, you know, at least a goal, something you're, you're somewhat driven to do. When do you want it? List why you want it. What's the pay value to me? I like, mm-hmm. I like the pay value terminology because that means it has value to me personally. Mm-hmm. Exactly. You know, and I like how you say it. it's going to pay off at the end. Yes. And then honestly, look at the obstacles, list them. And once you do that, confirm or adjust mm-hmm. the goal and the, and the timeline that you, you're you going to have. And then you can get to number five, which I think we're going to tackle in the Patreon section. We are. So if you are not yet a Patreon member, you want to sign up. Sign up for silver or gold because the silver and gold level members have an opportunity to hear the rest of the story. And what we've been sharing today is partially from Lanny Basham's book with Winning in Mind in the goal setting section. If you haven't read that book, I highly recommend that you do. If you're a gold level member, you might get a discount. So you might want to check that out as well. Like this if you do. Share it with a friend. We'll see you next time.